Hi, everybody. Bill here. You know, I've, I've thought about putting together a series of videos of different things we've talked about. And in fact, I'm going to give it a name and call it the Superstition Mountain Astronomical League Member Training Videos for Small MTV. And that will be a, a YouTube playlist that we will be able to, you will be able to access from time to time from a series of, of videos. So for now, I thought what I would uh, start with, something that I thought I would start with is uh, something very basic, and that is the use of the left and right click mouse buttons. Now on a Mac, the right um, mouse click button, as I uh, am led to believe, you press the control and press the mouse button. Um, that's the extent of my knowledge of uh, the Mac and iOS operating system. And really, any of these videos I'm going to do uh, will be so-called device independent. It won't matter whether you're using a Mac or a PC. If there is some exception to that, I'll try to note that. So uh, we're going to go with this for now. Um, I'm going to first talk about selection versus the actual operation. Selection, back in the old days when Word first came out in MS-DOS, you press a key, happened to be the F6 key in DOS, and then you scrolled across to the end of what you wanted to highlight or select, and then you press that key again. So that was the first step in a two-step process of first highlighting. And again, what you're doing here is you're left-clicking on a point, holding that left-click mouse button down, and then scanning uh, to pick up a range, do a range selection. Then for the second half of the step, you're going to right click. Now the interesting point about a right click is that the right click will be pretty much object dependent. In other words, it depends on the object that you're <laughs> highlighting. And to show that, I'm going to just drop this screen, come up to the desktop, and I'm going to pick uh, any object here. Here's a, uh, an icon, a shortcut for an application. And when I right click on it, it gives me all of the choices that are applicable to that type of object. And usually, the topmost item in the list is what you would get by left clicking uh, on, that, on that object, or double left click, I should say, double clicking on it. So by right-clicking, I have a, a whole other range of choices I can make that I can perform on that object. So I'm going to left-click, and uh, that'll drop that, that menu. Now here you see I'm positioned on the blank part of the screen. And watch what happens when I right-click here. You see a totally different set of options. Again, uh, the right-click is object-dependent. It depends on the object on which you're doing the right-click. Uh, for example, while I'm here, let's go down to display settings. Does this has come up enough? And I can click on advanced display settings and I can change my, uh, the resolution of my monitor, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Thank you. Okay. So if I wanted to range select this information here, and now at this point I can hit the delete key. I could do another range select. I could right click. And you see there are the uh, choices for a series of text. I could eliminate it, cut it. I could copy it and then position my cursor somewhere else, right click and paste that string. Now, of course, this, this sentence won't make much sense at this point because I've just totally rearranged everything, but that's okay. The idea is to uh, go ahead and operate on uh, the object, again, demonstrating what you can do with the right click. So let's, uh, let's leave that one, and let's, do, let's demonstrate another method and purpose that you would employ for, uh, for selecting. Now here we have a list of, uh, per, these are a list of files. These are actually photographs, JPEGs. Here I'll just double click and open one up. Nice a picture of the mountain. Okay, now let's say that I wanted to copy some of these uh, files to another folder. And by the way, you see I'm operating on a demo folder into which I've copied a sampling for photos that I have. 
So let's say I wanted to copy just a few of them. We'll copy all of them in a minute. I would left click on the first one that I wanted to choose. Could be either, any, either one of them, any of them in the list. And then I'm going to hold the control key and click left click on the second and possibly even the third. Now that I've selected three of the objects of interest and I want to copy them or move them to another folder, uh, to copy them I would press and hold the control key and left click and hold the uh, left mouse button down and drag those objects to whatever destination folder I have in mind. If I wanted to move it, I would not press the uh, control key. I would simply left click, hold it. You notice these same files are still the ones that are selected and I'm going to move it over to uh, this folder here. And you notice it moved them, it did not leave them back there. So I'm going to go back, put those back where they were by range clicking and dragging, dragging them back to this uh, demo folder. Okay, let me reselect those. Then when I right click, the options menu applies to the list of items or objects uh, that I have selected here. Okay. So another choice is to Let's say I wanted to do a range select and, and select all of the items. I sometimes do this with a list of 10, 15, 20 photographs. Okay, so let's take uh, the first one and then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to press and hold the shift key and I'm going to left click again and that just selected all of them. Now again, I can do the right click and now I can perform whatever operation. Now, in preparation for a later uh, demo where I'm going to show you how to upload photos to uh, PBase or whatever, um, I'm going to show you how to create a zip file. Now, this has come up several times where people will send me photos, for which I'm in deeply grateful, <laughs> but I could get 5, 10, 15 photos in an email, and it makes it a little, little different, uh, difficult to download each and every one of them. What you can do instead is send those to a zipped folder, a compressed zipped folder. Now, depending on your version of Windows that you're using or a Mac, this will be called, maybe called by some other name. But every system will have an option to do something similar to this. So I'm going to click Compress Zip Folder. And then it gives me the option to name this sample.zip. And now over here in the... Uh, Windows Explorer list, you see it now shows up as a subfolder, and this will actually display its content. Now, we'll get into zipped files later, but that's how you can zip that. And then I can actually email this to someone, and instead of having them open up four individual photos, they would open all four of them with one double click. When we get to uploading the PBase, we'll see where this comes in very handy. Uh, you can upload the zip file, and uh, it'll process all of them. Process all of them at one fell swoop. Okay, now what I'd like to do for the last demonstration is how to delete portions of an email that you don't really want to get into. Uh, that you don't want when you reply to an email, you uh, you simply want to reply with just what the sender sent you, and you don't have to. Uh, send the entire email contents back to them as soon as I find something here. Okay, let's take uh, Carol's email. Now let's say that I want to respond to Carol and I don't need to include everything that she had received initially. So what I can do is come up here anywhere after I'm going, I'm going to, first of all I need to select reply. Okay, hi Carol. Thanks for joining. Okay. Now what I want to do is come down just to the point beneath her initial message. And again, there's no need in resending all of this. I can left click and hold that left mouse down and drag the cursor to the bottom or to any portion of this message. And now all I have to do is hit the delete key, and that's gone. 
now when I send this back to Carol. And you'll see this showing up in your mailbox because it's being addressed to the, uh, the Yahoo group. Okay, So you will see this appear in your mailbox shortly. Okay. So I'm going to send that off. Now, the original message that I received from her, of course, has the full text. What she will eventually see, and all of you, is simply my reply, and with the only part below that, and here it is, the only part below that is what she originally sent me. Here was my reply to her. Here is her original message to me. And this stuff down here is everything that Yahoo appends to the message. Uh, giving us a variety of options. We will get into Yahoo at a later date and time. So with that, uh, please review this and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you.